Well, hello again from St. James's Park, where events just over my shoulder in the Gallagher End goal there of, uh, well, actually the goal's gone. Yeah, sorry, there used to be a goal there. Uh, yeah, maybe Stockley Park have taken it away to measure it. That's one last check they could do to see if they can finally disallow Newcastle's goal. Uh, we've got to start there, guys. It's the main talking point. It's what we'll be talking about in the pub uh, in 10 minutes' time, hopefully. Uh, it's what we've been talking about downstairs. It's what all of our match reports are dominated by, and that is the, the only goal of the game and the controversy surrounding its awards or potential non-awards. Now, we've just come upstairs from talking to Mikel Arteta downstairs and he was furious he was he was raging uh, he said it was embarrassing he said he felt sick repeatedly uh, and then it was an absolute disgrace now you wouldn't exactly say what he uh, <laughs> what he was so furious about uh, I hope you hadn't just read my Daily Mail match report link in the description below by the way uh, because yeah he would have been uh, he would have been incensed still further because I called it a, a perfectly good goal uh, perfect in the sense of there was no real evidence from what we saw on our replays in the press box to uh, to disallow it will come on to what I subsequently think uh, after the game but certainly in the moment and you're only going off of what you see and we were you know like I say we've got a few replays there uh, in the press box I was confident enough in my first match report to commit to Stockley Park getting it right now Arteta thinks otherwise and let's just go back and let's just strip it down the the three potential infringements does the ball go out of play uh, on initial viewing, I, I thought it, it might have done, but then wasn't sure. And if you're not sure, then the officials can't give it. Being sports have subsequently produced an image with some technology that shows the ball was in play. Okay, that's infringement one done. The cross comes in, Joe Linton then gets up above uh, Gabriel and the ball drops for Anthony Gordon, who scores the goal. Potential uh, offence number two is the is the foul. Uh, I don't think it's a foul. I think it's just two people jumping for for the ball. Gabriel has to be far stronger. If I was Mikel Arteta, I'd be looking at him first. So I don't think it's a foul. Uh, number three is Gordon offside, and this now, with the benefit of a little bit of. Uh, you know, bit of time and a couple more replays is the one I'm not sure on. Now I've seen a replay now just there which suggests the ball comes off Gordon, uh, sorry, Gordon Joe Linton, see how confusing it is, uh, it comes off Joe Linton's arm and lands for, for Gordon. Now is it a handball? Maybe it looks a little bit high but if Joe Linton does play the ball, is Gordon offside? I think maybe he is, I, I, I don't know because the goalkeeper was was in front of Gordon has is Gordon actually level with Joe Linton at the time uh, if you've come to this video for some clarity guys I'm just, sorry I'm not I'm not uh, providing it but to go back to, to what I knew at the time and to what I knew on full time I thought it was a, I thought it was a, a good goal and there wasn't really reason to disallow it and because of that I think it was right to stand and don't forget you know in a pre everyone's moaning about VAR in a pre VAR world that goal would have would have stood anyway because it wasn't disallowed by the uh, by the on field official because and as well you know it, it goes back to to that when you're actually watching it in real time there's no real reason to disallow it and isn't this what everybody wants you know the the removal of VAR yes the the checks were there and uh the the, the checks didn't find evidence to chalk it off so for that for me I think it should stand and yes there'll be criticism of the, the guys in Stockley Park for how long it took and yes the process was fairly exhaustive did it take the fun out of it well they would have probably just about heard the roar 300 miles away when it was given so to, to that end it was it was pure theatre uh, and it, it was enough for what for me was an absolutely deserved victory for Newcastle. Now why do I think it was deserved? Because Newcastle showed they showed a street fighting quality, they showed cunning, uh, they, 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 they showed they had, they had greater wit about them than Arsenal. Arsenal, don't forget, Miguel Arteta's fuming with the, the officials. Uh, he should be fuming with his own team to a degree. They had one shot on target and that was Gabriel Martinelli's weak curler, which Nick Pope could have put his cap on uh, in first half injury time. Yes, Arsenal had a lot of the ball. I didn't think they really knew what to do with it. The Kai Havertz experiment has got to stop. Uh, he's a very good footballer who was absolutely incapable of, of having a very good game of football. Uh, and, you know, they, they put him in that number 10 pocket where Newcastle have struggled this season. They managed fairly, fairly easily with him. And just quickly on Havertz, it seems like a long time ago now, that challenge on Sean Longstaff in the first half wasn't a red card. <laughs> Under the rules, I'd say maybe not because he doesn't, the, the, the leg which leaves the ground doesn't catch him. But just the fact that Sean avoids serious injury, does that mean it's not a red card? Well, for me, it probably shouldn't, you know, because 
if Sean doesn't get his leg out the, the, the out of the way in time and Havertz makes contact, then then you know I, I, th I think it should be a red. Do I think it's a red under the rules as they are now? Probably not. And when I saw the replay, I thought I said to my colleagues in the press box, a yellow is just about just about right for that. Newcastle end up having three players booked on the on the back of that for their protests. Uh, in a strange way, it was. Uh, probably Kai Havertz's greatest contribution unwittingly albeit you know a foul which ends up getting three opposition players in the book but no he uh, he stayed on which was arguably a bonus to Newcastle and a blow to Arsenal uh, and in the in the second half and listen it was a scrap in the first half it wasn't good I thought Arsenal were probably marginally the better team in terms of what the what they did with it but it was a it was a real fight but then I thought that changed in the in the second half uh, and Newcastle really were good value for the victory and while I said it was you know theatre uh, as they went through all of those checks and the roar when the goal is finally given I thought the last 15-20 minutes were, were theatre as well as Newcastle yes they did sit in but the the bricks they'd been using to chuck at Arsenal they, they end up building a defensive wall with them and none more so than the captain Jamal Lascelles and I'm going to come on to my merit marks in just a little bit because I thought there were three obvious contenders we could have taken three stars each I can't do that that's my rules uh, so I will go the three to one and tell you uh, to, to tell you who I believe deserving of the of the most. But I thought Lascelles at the heart of the defence today and towards the, the the end there, I thought he was was tremendous. But all through the team, they just had that niggly fighting spirit about them. You know, Bruno Gomorrah was in the mood for a scrap from the from the word go. He was probably looking to stay on the field as well for the uh, for the elbow he landed on the back of Jorginho, which which for me. Uh, Come on, I think in a VAR world you shouldn't be doing things like that. That can that can cost your team. And Eddie Howe sort of hinted at, at as much afterwards that he just told Bruno and and others to keep their heads and to calm down uh, at half time. But from from that point on, you know what a what a huge brilliant victory it is for them. I've said how for them to take the next step and to bridge that gap to be in one of the you know, one of the, the top four, top four, top six is a huge difference. Being a top six team, I think Newcastle are, you know, they are that now, but to really cement themselves as a as a top four team season on season, they've got to start beating Arsenal. They've lost last, the last of the eight out of the last 10 uh, against them. Uh, you know, awful, awful record against not just Arsenal, but if, if we're being honest, you know, the very top teams, Liverpool have only a three times City once, Arsenal once, those are Eddie Howe's only five defeats at St. James's. They had to start beating them, and today they did. And Eddie Howe laid a blueprint, Arsenal unbeaten coming into this, don't forget, he laid a blueprint of how to do it, and that was by, you know, Eddie Howe, the purist from Bull, uh, Bournemouth who likes to, uh, to pass the ball about, well, you know, He's shown how adaptable and how much he has changed and how mature he is as a manager that he can send out his team with a game plan, yes, to, to infuriate, to frustrate, to niggle, to bite, to, to tackle, to kick, the time waste, whatever it may be, uh, they, they did it and they've, they've, they've won a football match against a very good team who they didn't allow to, to be very good today. And for that, they deserve you know, tremendous credit again. This threatened to be a, a bad week coming into with injuries, Tonali rumbling in the background, uh, they've gone to Man United, won without conceding, they've beaten Arsenal, winning without conceding, now on to Dortmund, that's the one, you know, if they want to keep that Champions League dream alive, and wow, going there on, on Tuesday, I can't wait, that is going to be absolutely fascinating, it's going to be brilliant guys, but uh, now I'm going to come on to those uh, merit marks, I'm going to put them on screen now, now the three, doesn't go to Jamal Lascelles, <sighs> this was a toss up, it goes to Joe Linton, I just thought, on Tuesday, on Wednesday night at Old Trafford, he came back to his best after a little bit of a sticky return from injury where I didn't think he was anywhere near his normal levels. Today there, wow, didn't he, he set the tone. Uh, he was immense in the manner in which at times he, he interacted with the, with the crowd, with his teammates. I just thought he, he led, I was going to say he led from the front, he led from the front, he led from the left he led from the right he led all over the place uh, and no surprise it was him popping up with the, the aggression to, to, to win the ball for Anthony Gordon's goal uh, so Joe Linton gets the 3-2 Lascelles I've spoken about him we've said a lot is, is Jamal Lascelles a good player what happened to him you know I haven't seen him for so long we've got our answer now he's come back into the team since Sven Botman's injury uh, and immediately myself other supporters whatever looked at it and thought that could be a problem for Newcastle. It's not. I've just asked a question of, uh, a, a question of Eddie, a, que a question of Eddie downstairs, uh, saying, you know, the Sven Botman news is big that he, he could be facing a, 
significant time out yet we're not really talking about it, it hasn't been big headline uh, you know big headline news the last couple of years because Jamal LaSalle's has been so good and that there out of all the performances since he came back into the team that was his best I thought he was imperious and if I could give him three I would but he's got the two and the one goes to the scorer Anthony Gordon who is emerging as on Wednesday night I thought he had the you showed Craig Bellamy like qualities about him in terms of that nuisance factor he was that again there today wow wasn't that his setting you know he he loved that he was everywhere uh he was getting he did well as well because he got booked in that ridiculous uh, you know, uh, one Newcastle player nearly loses a leg and three players, three that three, their own team gets booked. He was one of those. He did well to keep his cool and to rile Arsenal at the same time. Uh, and he popped up right place, right time to get that goal. So one uh, one star for Anthony Gordon. Now, a little bit of negative news to emerge from that. Jacob Murphy came on, dislocated his shoulder within, uh, you know, a matter of 10 minutes or so, whatever it was. He now is going to face surgery, looking at three months out, Eddie said. Dan Byrne landed really heavily on his back there in the, uh, in the first half. He was forced up at half time. I've just asked Eddie the question for a little bit of clarity. He said, it doesn't seem like one of those whereby you go to bed and wake up in the morning, it's okay. He said, quote, Dan is worried about it. So I don't think we'll see Dan Byrne in Dortmund. We certainly won't see Jacob Murphy. He now uh, faces surgery. So again, uh, the, the patchwork quilt, the patched up 11, go to Germany this week, but one thing, and you know, you know, clouds, silver linings, everything. Tino Livermento came in on at half time, and w wasn't he tremendous again? Kieran Trippier switched to the left, and I think that's how they should go now, they will go on Tuesday. It gets two very good players uh, in the team, uh, and Livermento again, second half. He was part of that resistance. Just to give you a little bit of insight, there's one challenge he made down there in the right back position towards the Leaser's end, and we're right next to the dugout, and it was so good and so well timed four or five substitutes must have jumped up and they were punching the roof of the plastic perspex dugout in appreciation and celebration of what long, young Livermento had done. I don't know how we heard it above all the Tino Tino which had, which had gone up but we didn't. You could see that dugout almost reverberating and that just sort of encapsulated that spirit and that fight in the second half and for those reasons that is why for me Newcastle were absolutely brilliant value for their victory and it puts them in a brilliant place now going to Dortmund but they've got to pick themselves up that would have been mentally and physically sapping uh, there tonight and they've got to go and do it all again in Dortmund because it's another absolutely huge one and I say this all the time guys but we roll on it's great fun at the moment that wasn't one of the purest absolutely not but it was uh, it was terrific to watch and, and terrific to to report on too so uh, there's probably stuff I've left out of this video <laughs> there's just so much to unpack and to unpick uh, I'm off for a, uh, for a pint now with the boys down there look at them where are they Jory Journal's rival channel, but we're all friends. We're going to go for a piano. It's my birthday tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, and then fly to Dortmund first thing Monday morning, the midday flight from Newcastle. Please say hello uh, if uh, if you are there, and we'll have a chat about what went on today, what's going to go on on Tuesday, because aren't we just loving it at the moment? It's just great fun to be to be part of, to be covering as a journalist, and I'm sure you guys as fans are enjoying it too. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. So one last scan, boys, uh, boys, boys and girls, as is... Uh, as is, as is tradition uh yeah hit like hit subscribe as well okay take care and i'll see you from germany on monday night bye bye